morning, church. I welcome you to worship at peace. It's good to have you with us in worship today. Thank you for spending part of your Sunday morning with us. Sunday, August the 22nd, 2021, 13th Sunday after Pentecost. And hello to those who are watching us at home or wherever you might happen to be. It's nice to have you with us in worship today. Uh, thanks, for, uh, thanks for joining us. A couple of quick announcements to share with you uh, before our service begins. Uh, following our in-person service here, we'll be having coffee hour, to which, of course, you are all invited. You can head out this door and down the hall, follow the smell of coffee and goodies. Please come join us uh, for coffee hour following service. For those at home or anyone who would like to join us, at 10 o'clock we'll also turn on the Zoom coffee hour. That link will be shared, was shared out in, in News Blasts this week, and it'll also be shared on our Facebook page, so you can come join us um, if you would like to for Zoom coffee hour as well. So there is that, and then this coming Wednesday at 5.30, uh, Facebook Live and 6 o'clock will be our uh, uh, Zoom communion. And a quick thank you to all those who helped make Wednesday's uh, cookout and campfire a success. It sure was a lot of fun, and I'm glad uh, for all the hands that helped helped to make that happen, and also for all those who came and and joined us. Thank you for thank you for doing that. And a couple of ways that you can reach out uh, from the the congregation into well, kind of one into the community and one. Well, they're both in the community. The first one is some of you have been asking about, you know, are we doing anything for Haiti and all of the, all of the goings on there? And Lutheran Disaster Response uh, has a link that you can go and all the money that you donate, 100% of it goes to help Haiti. And so uh, there was a link that you saw if you, uh, beforehand during services that we'll put that link on our, on our website as well. And we'll make sure that, that you have access to that link um, Luther Disaster Response is who we work through, and, uh, and they do good work, so we're grateful for them. And a bit closer to home, uh, every year we give out Bibles to uh, our three-year-old, or up to our three-year-olds, the second graders, or our uh, fourth through fifth graders, and our sixth graders, they all get Bibles, right? And so we want to offer you the opportunity to help sponsor a Bible. So in the back, there's a board that it's got some envelopes on it, and you can help sponsor a Bible or three or five. And all of the information is back there. Nikki would also be a great person to talk to as we talk about this. But what's one of the excitement, exciting things that we can do is offer uh, Bibles to our young people. And so if you would like to be a part of that this year, uh, like I said, you can check out the board in the Narthex or talk with Nikki for more information. And we're sending all that stuff out electronically too. So you'll have it in a variety of ways. And then we'll be giving away Bibles on September the 26th during worship. So with that, let's take a moment. We'll prepare our hearts and minds for worship. I invite the congregation to stand as you are able. Turn in your hymnal to hymn 557 or read it off the screen as we sing our opening hymn, hymn 557. Or five, yeah, 557.
blessings flow. Praise God, all creatures here below. Praise God above, ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son. We continue with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of the God of mercies and the God of miracles. Amen. Draw God's abundance. Let us confess. Amen. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe that enough in your from the way understandings in you we take offense at your teachings and your ways turn us again to you where else can we turn share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world amen beloved people of god in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Let's pray. Holy God, your word feeds your people with life that is eternal. Direct our choices and preserve us in your truth. That renouncing what is false and evil, we may live in you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We may be seated for our readings. Chapter 24, beginning with the first verse. In this reading, we learn that the Middle East, the word covenant means agreement or alliance. It describes relationships and is the primary word used to characterize the relationship between God and Israel. By delivering Israel, God has already begun the relationship. Joshua calls upon the people to respond. Then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel. And they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Now therefore revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Now, if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods, for it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt out of the house of slavery and who did those great signs in our sight. He protected us all, all along the way that we went and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord for he is our God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Ephesians chapter 6, beginning with the 10th verse. In this reading, we hear that, like a general giving a rousing speech to troops before battle, this letter closes by calling on Christians to be equipped for spiritual warfare against evil. The full armor of God includes truth, righteousness, 
peace, faith, the gift of salvation, and the word of God inspired by the Spirit. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day and having done everything, to stand firm. Stand, therefore, and fasten the belt of truth around your waist and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, Put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the spirit at all times in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me, so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly, as I must speak. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite the congregation to stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel this day comes from the Gospel according to John, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. Jesus said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. And when many of his disciples heard it, they said, This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining, said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe and who was the one that would betray him. And Jesus said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went along with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. So it's no secret that I love community theater. And if you spend even a half an hour with me, you will learn of that love. And so when people ask me why I love it so much, I have a hard time at first explaining why because it's been a part of who I am for so long. It's a, it's a second nature to me. But as I think about it, the answer isn't hard. It's because of the community that is created. The people that come together for that common purpose. People who would not otherwise, maybe, have anything to do with each other, who have nothing else in common. They all find this unifying peace when they step on that stage. No, I've been in productions with doctors and police officers, with college students and farmers, with single parents or those recently divorced looking to get back into the world. I've been on the stage with new folks in town who are looking to meet others. 
I've shared the stage with young and old, with gay and straight, with people who look like me, people who, who don't. But we all have that one common goal, despite all of the differences that might exist. Even if we don't know each other, this one commonality gives us this bond like we've been known each other forever. Together, as a community, we are unified, but we are also completely broken. And often that happens simultaneously. And the same is true of the church. In our reading from Ephesians today, the Apostle Paul is giving us this final checklist of what it means to be a Christian as he is telling us about the pitfalls that we will encounter in the world. He is telling us that if we are to follow the examples that Jesus has set for us, if we can take this list that, he, that Paul has compiled for us and has been giving us, we're going to be able to accomplish what God intends for us, which is to create this community of believers. This community of people who might not otherwise have anything to do with each other. Who might not otherwise have anything in common. But we will create this community. And that is what God intends for each and every one of us. To be a part of the community. We've been given the tools. Or as Paul says in our reading this morning, we've been given the weapons or the armor to do the work that is needed. It should be easy, right? After all, you've been given the directions. Now carry them forward. Except it's not. It's often not easy. In verse 12, Paul warns us that we're fighting against something, we're, we're fighting against an enemy that we can't see. But we're also fighting against the world. The society that we live in, the daily differences that should be so small, but often they explode right before us. The mountain out of the molehill example. I don't believe any of us wake up in the morning going, I wonder how I can make the world implode today. I wonder what I can do to throw a monkey wrench in my life and everybody else's life that I meet. I want to believe that none of us do that, right? And yet, many of us are very successful in doing just that. At least I am. I often toss monkey wrenches into well-laid plans simply because I allow myself to think I'm smarter than I am, to stop listening to the guidance that I've given, and rather think I know better. We all have good intentions with the start of each new day. But as we start to listen to the world and listen to society, we start to believe what we're being told about ourselves. It's when everything goes haywire. Now, as an actor, when you're on the stage, if you follow the directions that the director has given you, it's going to go okay. You might not agree with it. You might think that you know better. But it's not your vision, it's the director's vision that you must follow. And if you follow that, then you're going to be successful. Set aside your ego for the betterment of the cast. And as a Christian, we are successful when we are at our, when we can set aside our own garbage, when we can say that we don't know what's best always, and we can listen to what our community needs people are talking about around us. We focus on what God has put in front of us. That's what Paul is getting at in our readings this morning. It's what Paul has been getting at through this entire letter of the Ephesians. You have the tools. You've got the layout. It's like watching a YouTube video and going, okay, I know how to do it. Then you don't follow what the YouTube video shows you. You've got the instructions, now follow them. If we say we're committed to making sure that others know that they are welcome at the table that God has created, then we need to be dedicated to that plan, otherwise it's simply not going to work. If we commit ourselves to truth and righteousness, peace, faith, 
and salvation. If we commit ourselves to sharing those things with others, it can't go wrong. But the problem is, too often we think we know better. Too often we think the rules don't apply to us. That if we tweak the plan just a little bit more, it's going to be better. Because after all, who knows, who knows better what's for us? God or ourselves? I know I'm not supposed to God. You know, some things are st- simply too juicy not to share. And I know it's probably right. I know that we're supposed to treat all people equally, but there are some people, you know, those people, they take advantage of every situation that's offered to them. And and why should I care about them? Why should I help them anymore? Because they already help themselves too much. I know we're supposed to speak the truth in love, and if I believe it's true, even if it really isn't, then, I mean, I'm doing right. We believe that we know best. We get tripped up by our knowing sometimes. But here's the thing. You are a part of the family. No one can question that because it's true. They don't have to like it. They don't have to agree with it. But nothing changes the fact that at the end of the day, you are a part of God's family because God has called you. Through the waters of baptism, God has called you. The body and blood of Christ, God has forgiven you and has reminded you that God's love for you is bigger than all things. Even if you think you don't belong, guess what? It's not up to you. It's not up to you to decide whether or not you fit in because God has already declared it. When those moments happen, when it happens and everything falls apart, as it often does, when we don't follow the directions that we've been given, we need to remember that we are not alone, but rather we are surrounded by that community of believers who will pick us up, dust us off, and put us back on the stage so that we can do it again and again and again. So that we can pick others up and dust them off and put them back on the stage. Because that's what it means to be a part of community. After all, life is unpredictable, but God never is. God is the same now as ever. So to quote the great theologian Junior Asparagus of VeggieTales fame, God is bigger than the boogeyman. There is nothing, there's absolutely nothing that God can't overcome absolutely nothing because that's God's promise from the very beginning that God is bigger than your doubts and your fears and all of it but if you can't remember any of that hopefully you can remember to pray because prayer is the greatest gift that God has given us the ability to talk to God and to share our joys and our sorrows, our fears, our hesitations. Remember to pray. Pray for others, but most importantly, pray for yourself. Pray so that God knows. Pray and so that God hears. Let's pray. Gracious God, often we don't have the words or think we don't have the words to come to you in prayer. We think that you don't have time. We think that it's not going to matter. We think that you don't listen. But the reality is you know our desires long before we ever speak them. And you simply want us to be in conversation. So help us to believe that conversation matters and help us to carry that conversation into the world. In your name we pray. Amen.
Our next hymn is hymn 638 in your ELW, 638, Blessed Assurance. I'm sure a lot of you know it simply by heart, but for those who need the, the hymnal, it's 638 or on the screen. I invite the congregation to stand as you are able, as together we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended in on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We'll continue with our prayers. God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God of courage, bless all leaders of your church. Make them ready to proclaim the gospel of peace and strengthen them to preach your loving word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of creation, bless fields and orchards, protect the land from drought, and bring life-giving rain to support growth. Instruct your people in wise treatment of the world you have provided for all your creatures. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of community, bless all who seek justice between nations and peoples. Give guidance to bridge builders, heal divisions, and inspire cooperation in times of crisis, disaster, and war. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. God of compassion, bless all who are in any need. Accompany all who are lonely and feeling abandoned and remind them of your abiding presence. Accompany all who are persecuted and exploited and open us to their cries. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of change, bless our transitions. Guide all who are embarking on new stages in life, such as a new job, new school, or new community. Sustain enduring friendships and kindle new relationships and interests. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of comfort, bless all who mourn the deaths of their beloved ones. We give you thanks for the saints who have gone before us. Renew our confidence in your promise of resurrection and life in the world to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. In just a moment, we will have communion, and we will do communion one of three ways. Uh, the first way will be at the direction of the usher. You will come forward and uh, receive. I will stand in the middle. You will receive the wafer, and then you can go to either side and receive either the wine or the grape juice. When you came in, if you're not comfortable coming forward, when you came in today, there, were, uh, there, were, there should have been trays or something available to grab uh, cups, uh, prepackaged cups. If you did not get one and would like one, uh, please uh, let us know. We will gladly bring you one. And the third way is if you're not comfortable coming forward and you're not, um, you didn't grab a, a cup, and you would like us to come to you, we will gladly do so. Just uh, tell an usher or indicate uh, to me that you would like me to come to you, and I gladly will do that. All right, all are welcome at the table. Uh, if you believe that Christ is Lord, you are welcome. If you receive communion somewhere else, you're welcome. Please know that, uh, that we truly mean when we say all are welcome. But before we get there, I want to say thank you for supporting the ministry here at Peace. We simply couldn't do it without your support. And if you ask me the best way to support us, I'm always going to tell you, please pray for us. Because prayer does make a difference. If you're able to help us financially, that's also appreciated. If you're here in person, there are offering plates where you could drop an offering. Um, and if you're watching us online, you can go to our website, peaceoshkosh.com, and click the Donate Here button. That You can do it that way. You also can send... Uh, Send an offering through the mail to our, to our uh, office, or you can stop by when we're open. A variety of ways, but please, most importantly, continue to pray for us. So with that, let's get ready for communion. Invite the congregation to stand as you are able. Let's pray. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and broke it. He gave it to his disciples. He said, take and eat. This is my body. It is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and he blessed it. He gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. It is given and shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray, as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends of Jesus, come to the table. Receive nourishment for your journey. The gifts of God for the people of God. All truly are welcome. You may be seated.
and for those gathered in our pews and for those at home and say the body of Christ is given for you. Amen. And the blood of Christ is shed. I invite the congregation to stand as you are able. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you, keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Wellspring of joy, through this meal you have put gladness in our hearts. Satisfy the hunger still around us. Send us as joyful witnesses that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all people through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And I'll receive the blessing. You are what God made you to be, created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, freed to serve your neighbor. God bless you that you may be a blessing. In the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Amen. Before we sing our sending song, uh, again, a reminder that as service is over, you're welcome to join us down the hall for, for hospitality. We would love to have you. And if you don't want to join us in person, we will have that Zoom option available at 10 o'clock. Again, the link will be on our Facebook page as well as it's been sent out. So know that those options are available to you. Thank you to our tech booth, to our ushers, to Summer for the music, Dirk for reading. We're grateful for all of you. It surely takes so many hands to make this happen. And so we are grateful for, for all of them and grateful for all of you. So with that, we will sing our sending song. It's in your ELW. It's hymn 620.